Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, uh, thanks, <laughs> Patrick, for your kind invitation. Yeah, it is uh, uh, my honor to uh, give a talk here. Today, I I'm going to talk about the uh, uh, lasso risk and the uh, phase transition and the dependence. So here is the uh, outline. Uh, after a short introduction, I will uh, discuss the uh, asymptotic uh, uh, lasso risk, uh, just uh, the uh, the uh, asymptotic mean uh, square error for a lasso estimate. Uh, the, uh, then I will discuss the, the technique that uh, we used to get to derive this asymptotic lasso risk called the asymptotic uh, message passing algorithm. And then from this uh, derived asymptotic risk, we can obtain the phase transition uh, for the lasso estimate. And then I will provide some numerical study. Uh, basically, I will use the simulation uh, to uh, verify that the analytic result we derived is correct. And then finally, uh, uh, are some uh, conclusion remarks. Okay, so this is our main motivation is to uh, this the the sparse signal recovering problem. Uh, we want to uh, recover the the sparse signal beta zero from the uh, noisy measurements. Why? Uh, here the is a, the the W is a is a random noise. Uh, here the beta, you know, the beta zero, the true signal is uh, is p dimensional, but uh, it's k sparse, which means the at most uh, is the k uh, the components are non-zero. Uh, so among this, the total p uh, the uh, elements. So so then we know that the uh, lasso. Is uh, is one of the uh, the popular approach uh, to solve this problem. Uh, Lasso, I think everybody know it's called the least absolute shrinkage and the selection operator. Uh, it's basically just uh, solve this uh, uh, the quadratic uh, optimization problem. It's uh, uh, sometimes it is also called uh, L1 penalized the least square solution. Uh, here the lambda is a, you know is a tuning parameter. Uh, I know the for the noiseless situation, which means this if this uh, random error is zero, so then uh, actually uh, the, it is possible to get uh, get the exact reconstruction of beta zero, which means this beta head lambda is exactly can uh, exactly equal to beta zero. So of course, on some condition is that if the beta zero is sufficiently sparse. So, so here our our purpose is just to study uh, the uh, the precise uh, limit uh, uh, for for uh, this sparsity. Uh, okay, so uh, the actually the the uh, in the noiseless noiseless situation, the uh, lambda equals zero, the last four is identical to this, uh, the L1 minimization problem. This is the, the linear uh, uh, programming problem. We, we want to minimize this uh, objective function subject to this constraint. Uh, both the objective function and the constraint are linear. So this is a, a linear, uh, programming problem. So the Lasso uh, solution is equivalent to uh, this uh, minimization problem uh, in, uh, in the noiseless situation, which means if there's no uh, random noise, these two solutions are, are identical. So, so we, we want to study uh, the, uh, the the condition for which we can get the uh, exact uh, the reconstruction for this, for the uh, signal beta zero. Uh, we study this in the, based on the uh, uh, large sample asymptotics, which means we have the, both the sample size and the dimension go to infinity. 
here we uh, first uh, uh, def define some the define two quantities. One is called the uh, epsilon is the uh, is the sparsity over the dimension, and the delta is uh, n over p. So uh, we call the epsilon called the sparsity, and uh, the delta called the undersampling fractions. Uh, we, I think in our situation, we assume that the uh, all of the k, p, and the n go to infinity, but with the fixed ratio, fixed epsilon and the delta. So then the epsilon and the delta define a, a two-dimensional phase space. Uh, so the uh, we know that the we can get a, a phase transition curve. The the delta c epsilon. Uh, so we know that the, this phase transition curve can divide the, into the, this uh, phase space into uh, two components. One is called a success and one is called a failure. So we know above this transition curve, the last four uh, solution can get an exact reconstruction uh, with high probability. Under this uh, transition curve, the, uh, the reconstruction fails with also with uh, high probability. <clears throat> okay, I think here is uh, we uh, focus on the situation here that we assume that the, uh, the design matrix X uh, is uh, for the each row is uh, uh, IID uh, the uh, random Gaussian follow a multivariate Gaussian uh, distribution with mean zero and the uh, covariance matrix sigma. So here, the, I think we, we, for this plot, we assume that the, this the covariance matrix is, uh, is from the, uh, it's a compound, symmet compound symmetry, of, uh, it's the, the structure, uh, also called the L1 structure. Uh, so the, here, the, I think the, this is the, 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 some of the phase transition curve for uh, some uh, typical situations. Here, this is the two-dimensional, Phase space, and uh, we know that the here the uh, the this the black black curve represent the situation for IID Gaussian. So which means that if the this uh, correlation coefficient the rule equal to zero is uh, identical to the IID situation, it's standard Gaussian. So then uh, the result is from for this uh, the black black uh, the black curve. And this, the blue one represents if the row is, is positive, the, the 0 0.1. And this red one is, uh, is a result based on the, uh, if the row is negative 0 0.9. Uh, okay, so I think the, uh, uh, all the previous results the, for this IID situation, there are a couple of different methods to get this black curve. Uh, 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 the existing in the literature. So our contribution is that we want to uh, the generalize the the uh, this uh, the covariance matrix from IID situation to 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 the to general covariance matrix. So uh, yeah uh, yeah yeah. I will provide some um, more uh, simulation numerical result later on. Okay, so uh, uh, we will start from the <clears throat> start from the uh, we want to start from a symptotic uh, the uh, a symptotic risk study first study the symptotic risk for last all estimator. So let's first uh, uh, put the, the here is our setting. I think we already discussed this. We assume that the uh, the design metric design the matrix X is uh, is follow uh, the multivariate Gaussian and uh, the, the, we have an IID pairs for uh, in IID pairs and uh, for given X, we assume that Y uh, uh, is uh, this uh, is a linear format of X and then plus some random error. We assume this random error is follow some IID. It's not necessarily Gaussian. So here is our, I think uh, uh, it's, it's very, uh, the simple setting. Uh, it's, uh, everybody are, are very familiar with this, uh, with this setting. So here we want to consider a sequence of uh, converging sequence. It's, uh, uh, it's include these four uh, different components, beta zero, W and uh, 
sigma and x, uh, and uh, <clears throat> it's indexed by p. So we assume that our, uh, assume that the is p is uh, go to infinity, but the the, the with the fixed ratio a in over p uh, is fixed equal to delta. So uh, so this is our, our uh, asymptotic setting. It's uh, uh, it's different from we have uh, a lot of different kind of asymptotic settings, but here we assume this is uh, the fixed uh, fixed ratio. That's our uh, it's uh, our all results based on this setting. Okay, so I think then we have the some regularity conditions here. We assume this the beta zero is the, the empirical distribution of the beta of the beta zero uh, entries for beta zero converges to a probability measure with the bounded second order moment. Uh, so that's the uh, it's uh, uh, that's our requirement. We, we don't know exactly the, uh, the distribution, but we uh, uh, require it to have the bounded second order moment. So same thing for the empirical distribution for the entries for the random error. We also assume that it has a, a bounded second order moment. Okay, so then another regularity condition is that we assume that this sequence of the functions uh, has a differentiable limit for the p go to infinity. So I think this uh, is uh, actually the condition assumption for this assumption will guarantee that the, we can have the, the bounded limit for the Lasso risk. Okay, the final the assumption is for the covariance matrix. So this, the uh, assumption for the covariance matrix, uh, we, we also guarantee that the, uh, the it's the, uh, both the, the eigenvalues of the covariance matrix is bounded away from, it's a, the largest eigenvalue is bounded away from infinity and all the smallest eigenvalue is bounded away from zero because we require that both the, the covariance matrix and its inverse is, is, is bounded. Okay, so that's our, I think that's our, the, the main uh, regularity condition. So then from this uh, regularity condition, we also, in order to present our main result, we also need to introduce two functions. One is called the soft thresholding operation. So uh, it's called the eta theta. So it's, uh, uh, it's uh, the like the solve the minimization problem from this equation, uh, get the beta from this equation. Uh, uh, so this is uh, actually, is a, is a generalized form for soft thresholding operation. I think that if the, here the, if the covariance matrix is IID and then this actually the result is very simple. It's just uh, like the standard Lasso solution, like the, uh, you have the, beta equal to zero if the this v is uh, is absolute value of the v is less than theta then beta equal to zero so if it is bigger than theta then its solution is v minus theta if it is less than uh, less than negative theta then it is negative theta plus uh, if, if the v is less than negative theta then the solution is 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 a, a negative v plus uh, plus theta, so so the, uh, so that's the if the for the the covariance matrix is ID situation the uh, the result is is very simple but but if the for general uh, the covariance matrix so this is a the soft thresholding operation so this uh, uh, is used very frequently in our result. So other than this, we also define another function is the Psi function. Psi function is uh, uh, defined as a 
you see the here we have, we, we can see here, we have the beta zero is the true signal, true signal plus some the Gaussian, the, 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 the ran, Gaussian random noise is the, is the magnitude that is determined by the tau. So then this entire thing, if you apply this uh, soft stretch the operation, and then this result you get is the, the difference between this and the, the true signal, and then you get the quadratic form. So this is the uh, is the, the function is called the psi function. Uh, here the, the this uh, random Gaussian is uh, is independent from this beta zero. So like the, you contaminated the, the true signal by some Gaussian random noise. Yeah. Also this function is also uh, frequently used in our result. So we have this uh, the eta and and uh, and the psi uh, two functions. Okay, so then from these two functions, we can get our main result. Our main result is just the distribution limit of Lasso estimate. So uh, here, the, I think the, just to follow the, the standard, uh, the standard uh, the tradition we uh, introduce for, for a sequence of the, the pseudo lift is the function phi. So then uh, for any pseudo lift, uh, the sequence of uh, through the Lipschitz functions, uh, we have this uh, result. I think that you know that this is the equivalent to say that the here, because we see here the beta head, beta, beta head uh, lambda is just the Lasso estimate. So then here is, uh, is, uh, uh, is, uh, is uh, we already uh, introduced this, uh, the soft stretch holding operator uh, applied to this contaminated uh, the, the, the true signal the contaminated by, by some Gaussian noise and then apply this the uh, soft stretch in operator. So we see that actually this Lasso, Lasso estimate and, uh, and, and this uh, the, 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 the random variable defined in this way, actually they are, they are equivalent. So uh, uh, the, this is the, 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 the main uh, the result our main result, we get the uh, distribution and limit of the Lasso estimate. Uh, of course, our dis uh, the, the asymptotic is based on the is a fixed ratio of n over p fixed ratio uh, under this setting. Okay, I think here the another thing is that the uh, because we have the 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 in the Lasso, we uh, the estimate depends on the depends on the, the tuning parameter. Here there is a, that here that you see the, on, the, on the right hand side, we have this uh, tall star. Actually this tall star is the solution from this uh, fixed point equation of this uh, Psi function. So you solve this equation for, because this equation depends on the, uh, it's depends on another parameter is alpha. It's, it's alpha is, uh, so then, which means we have to, in order to get this uh, result, we have to get the correspondence be, uh, between the lambda and the alpha. So yeah, we will provide this uh, the equation uh, in the next slide. But uh, but here the the, the, the main uh, the, the result from, from from this theorem is that the uh, we know that the uh, the 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 distribution asymptotic distribution for the Lasso estimate is equivalent to to to, to this uh, the random variable. So can yeah, I have a question? This, yeah, yeah, go, go ahead, yeah. So uh, you also assume a randomness of this parameter beta zero, right? Yeah, 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 beta zero is random, yeah, right. And what, what, yeah. what uh, so you, uh, you, can, you can put constant, this, I mean, non-random as well here or not? I mean, how is it? Yeah, yeah, you can you can you can fix the, the if it's fixed that's that, that that's is uh, 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 that's a special case. Yeah. Okay, so ex but yeah. expected value on, on the middle part middle equation is also with respect of the distribution of beta z. So it's not conditional on beta z. No, I think this expectation is over this here. This, On this. this, okay. Yeah, right. It's a uh, because this is uh, is independent. Uh, it's an independent, it's a, it's a Gaussian contamination for this true signal. It's a true signal plus some Gaussian term. And then uh, you take expectation over this Gaussian term, yeah. Not that over beta zero, okay. Yeah. No, no, not the, because here we, we didn't do that. This is just, uh, okay. if yeah. it's 
function is it's 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 still random. Both the left hand side and the right hand side are still uh, random. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, so so because of because of this is a uh, is easier. Uh, we, we know the we can study based on this result. We can study all the asymptotic characteristics for the last all estimated estimated by, by by using this random variable because this random variable is a, is a, uh, the behavior we can we can uh, we can control it. So okay. So now for example, if we assume the leaf is still the leaf is function is just this simple the quadratic is a, is L two L two norm. So then we can exactly get the mean square error of the Lasso estimate. We can just plug in this uh, the theorem. We can get the the result because of the, we know that the distribution uh, limit for this uh, Lasso estimate. So actually, it turns out as it turns out, it's equal to uh, simply equal to this, uh, just based on the definition of the Poisson function. Yeah, you can we can immediately get this. Okay, now see this uh, result. Uh, is very uh, interesting because of the uh, under the uh, the in the noise in the noise noiseless situation this equal to zero and then you see this the the tall star is the 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 mean square error also called the last risk is just the proportion of this to this tall star square so so then I think the uh, uh, you, you know the in order to get the uh, the exact reconstruction, uh, you, uh, which means the uh, this the mean square error equal to zero, so so then which means the tall star square equal to zero. So then I think the in order to study the reconstruction problem, you just need to find the conditions such that the solution for this fixed point equation. Solution is only the unique solution equal to zero toss uh toss square equal to zero. If you had the if you find the conditions under which you can get the unique solution equal to zero for this fixed point equation, then which means you can get the ex exact uh, the, the reconstruction for the original signal uh, beta zero because of the you get zero toss square and then which means as a mean square error equal to zero okay so yeah we will we will discuss this uh, shortly so i, I think as, as i mentioned so because we have the on the on the in the in this theorem on the left hand side we have this the tuning parameter lambda but on the on the right hand side we introduce this parameter alpha so uh, they should have the one-to-one -one correspondence so here the here the this result provide a one-to-one -one. Uh, correspondence. So if you have the fixed alpha, then the, uh, we, we can get, get the exact lambda to correspond to this alpha. So then from, from here, we can get the, 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 the you know, the, for, for any lambda, we can get the exact uh, the alpha and also the, the tau, tau star and, and the theta star and, and uh, everything is also fixed on the, on the, on the right-hand side. Okay, so that's just a, uh, uh, some the explanation for for this the the theory our main theory. Okay, so I, I think the the how can we get this theorem? Actually, uh, the 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 method we use the, we call the uh, based on the uh, uh, approximate approximate message passing algorithm. Uh, yeah, because of the the you, you know the lasso for the lasso is is basically is a you can you can say. Uh, is a is a is a quadratic uh, programming problem, but uh, people also propose a lot of different algorithms to solve this Lasso problem. So I think the here the uh, message passing is is one of the uh, algorithms. So the basic idea is that the, we use this iterative algorithm. We uh, uh, the uh, the for uh, at each iteration assume that the beta t is the current estimation and then from this beta current estimation we can get the we can get the, the residual zt for the uh, for the current estimation and then from this zt you plug in this uh, the soft stretch holding operator you can get the the updated 
updated beta. And then from updated beta, you can get updated residual. And then you keep going until the convergence. I think probably you see that the difference, right? It's not a ZT, it's not the exact the, the residual. Residual is, should be, uh, 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 should be equal to this term, but we have some extra term. So uh, in the in residual, uh, after the, for the residual, uh, I think this extra term is, is also, it's called on saga term is very famous. It's actually the originally introduced uh, from the physicist uh, in the in the statistical phys physics uh, problem so actually this uh, on this term play, 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 plays a very uh, important role uh, in the in the in both the convergence and the asymptotic study yeah yeah well, yeah, I, I, yeah i will not go to the details but uh, but anyway we here is the solution this is the this is the the the, the, the solution uh, based on the uh, approximate message passaging algorithm. This is the purpose of this is to solve the Lasso uh, optimization problem. So, but the, the yeah, you can easily verify that the, the fixed point solution of this approximate message pa passing algorithm is e uh, equivalent to the optimization solution of the Lasso problem. I think uh, it's, it's just uh, uh, the, the, if the fixed, uh, for fixed point, then the beta t plus one is equal to beta t, and then you can solve this. Uh, 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 as it turns out, this solution is equivalent to the Lasso solution. Okay, I think the 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 main the the advantage of this the approximate message passing algorithm is that the we can we get the uh, the exact uh, the asymptotic limit at each iteration at each each iteration. Which means at each iteration t, if the 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 the, the p go to infinity with fixed ratio m over p, and then we know the proportional, uh, we know the, the distribution the limit of this of this beta of this beta at each iteration. So here is the, the result. So this is the result is is uh, uh, is obtained from the. I think the, the, the previously or have already people have already uh, the, the is established this uh, result. So you see here the, the same thing uh, for any uh, the pseudo Lipschitz sequence phi, we can get this result. It's, uh, you see, then it's, it is equivalent to say that this the asymptotic uh, the distribution limit of this beta is equivalent to this. Uh, I think same thing as the 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 full signal contaminated by some 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 Gaussian noise, and then apply this uh, soft stretch voting operation. So so then I actually this that you see that each iteration is uh, is only the determined by one single parameter tau t. Here the tau t actually the followed by this also followed by this iteration is is only a one dimensional iteration. It's a uh, it's a, every time the update the tau t plus one updated through updated can be updated through this uh, iteration. Here the, the psi is just the function we already defined it, it previously. So I think that so that's the advantage of uh, using this asymptotic message passing algorithm because of the 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 the, 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 the Distribution limit at each iteration already been uh, the established. So, so then I think the next thing we want to, <coughs> if we want to get the, if we want to get the uh, the distribution limit for the Lasso estimate, we just uh, the the things that we need to verify is just the, the Lasso, the here the Lasso uh, uh, the estimate and the, and the convergence result for this approximate message passing algorithm are the same. So, so, so then, because we, we already know the distribution limit for this, the beta t, so if the, the convergence, that converges to exact convergence to Lasso estimate, then we, we can also obtain the distribution limit for this last estimate. So that's just uh, our 
the, the main the, the step for 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 prove the theorem. We first uh, <coughs> the uh, the the proof that the these two are equivalent. Since we already get the asymptotic <coughs> result for this, uh, the asymptotic message pass, message passing estimate. So then we can establish also establish the asymptotic result for Lasso estimate. So that's the main idea. Uh, I think that uh, actually the yeah this uh, the uh, asymptotic uh, message passing algorithm it is uh, it's a very efficient uh, algorithm but uh, actually the the problem whether or not it converges is the still is a is a it's not a it's not a for all situations this you can get the convergence result based on this algorithm so I think the yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's actually the, the, the proof for the convergence of this algorithm is also uh, it's a, it's a depend on, especially depend on the, this covariance matrix that the, uh, the, uh, you have to apply some constraint on this covariance matrix in order to get the convergence result for this algorithm. Okay, so, so, so that's, uh, I think, the, is the main, the, the proof uh, steps for 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 the, this the theorem. Okay, now I think the, uh, as I said, so once we get the asymptotic uh, risk for the Lasso estimate, so then the next thing uh, we need to do, we can study from there to 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 get the the the, the first transition result. Yeah, because. Uh, we know that the in the in the noise 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 situation the the random noise equal to zero and then the the in order to get the exact reconstruction of the beta zero which means this you you have to have the you have to get the zero of the, the mean square error equal to zero which means you have to have this tall star the solution for the fixed point equation equal to zero. So, so, so then, as, as I mentioned, so then we, 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 we need to focus on this, uh, the fixed point equation. So we want to find uh, in which conditions we can get a unique zero solution for this equation. So, uh, so the, if uh, there's a, the, other than this, the zero solution. If the, you also get some other non-zero solution, then which means you you cannot you fail to reconstruct because the, uh, then you get the the mean square error is is not is, is can also be non-zero. So so then which means you can uh, you you fail to reconstruct the the the, the signal beta zero. I think so. That's the basic uh, idea. So so then I think the uh, the just the, the the things that we need to do is just to focus on the, the fixed point equation for for the psi function. So then we study on, on the which situation we can get the, the unique solution zero. So I think the so then uh, uh, the in the in the in the in the IID situation, if the identity matrix, so then actually the uh, yeah we can easily the, obtain that the 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 it's uh, the condition only depends on the only depends on the epsilon it's it's only depends on the epsilon here the the epsilon we know that it's uh, the sparsity only depends on the sparsity does not depend on the actual distribution of for for the for this the non-zero elements also the the does not depend on the whether the the positive the sign distribution it's only depend on the if you get the the for the for the epsilon for the 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 the, the if the fixed epsilon doesn't matter the actual distribution what kind of the actual distribution it follows so then uh, the as long as the epsilon is fixed then we can get a result for the first transition result so this is in the iid situation but uh, but here in the if the it's uh, not iid it's for the general uh, the the covariance matrix. So then, in addition to this epsilon index, we also need to introduce another index. Uh, I think the index is defined here. 
So this is, the, the, I think that it's, you see here, it's defined as the, the probability for the probability for the positive, the difference between the positive probability and the negative probability. And the, and the, and the, the uh, it's like the sort of the study, the, the positive and the negative asym as, 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 asymmetry, right? So, so this is the D, D epsilon. So uh, actually the, for the general, uh, the covariance matrix, the phase transition depends on, not only depends on epsilon, but also depends on this, the uh, asymmetric index, the positive and negative asymmetric index. So, so here is the, is the, I think the, this theorem uh, pretty much uh, uh, provide the, the, the exact phase transition curve under the general uh, covariance matrix, uh, the, uh, the sigma general uh, covariance matrix situation. So here the is the uh, I think the uh, the uh, uh, the to derive this is also is a is a, a pretty straightforward as long as we get the 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 psi function and we want to just verify on which condition we can get a unique zero solution. So here you see that the here we we see that the it's only depend on the it's also the the final result also only uh, the de depend on the uh, depend on the sign the the sign of the of the signal does not depend on the actual distribution of the signal beta zero so so actually you see here the, this is the uh, the active set a the script a is the the is the com combination of the two from the two two different uh, components. One is the if for, for for the actual for the actual if the 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 original signal is not uh, is 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 non-zero. It's 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 one is this is the script B is the set include all the all the non-zero component. And in addition to this, even for the the zero component for the original the signal is also there some contribution comes from the zero uh, 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 zero component so we see here the it's an active set the entire active set is 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 actually the union of the two two set one is the it's from the original non zero part one is from the even an original uh, non zero component it's just a, it's a, because of some we know that the we have some Gaussian contamination. So even if the original the original signal is zero, because of this Gaussian random contamination, you can also sometimes can also be become a negative set. Can can can, can become a, a, a active uh, in, in in this in this formula. So this is you see that this is the quadratic. Uh, is a quadratic formula. So here the 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 the, the, the since that uh, even if it uh, looks very complicated, but actually since we need to determine is also the only this this active set A script A. So it's from the it's one from the original active one, one is from the for the, the original non-active one, and then you need to you need to further you need to solve this solve this. The Lasso problem to get the 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 extra contribution the from the original non-negative component. Again, this you see here the the entire the result only depends on the sign of the uh, of the original or I think of the original of the original signal. The it's the the, the sign pattern of the original signal does not depend on the the, the 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 actual distribution uh, of the of the original signal. Okay, so so that's the uh, is our main result for the phase transition. I think the yeah uh, yeah the <clears throat> so yeah uh, yeah we can easily verify the if the here the sigma is an ID and then we can get the exact uh, the phase transition curve is consistent with the the, the previous where we are known the transition curve like the Donach Tanner transition curve or the I think the that transition curve have, have, has been derived based on 
uh, many many different methods so yeah i think that from uh, uh, this general result for special case if the sigma is iid is identity matrix then we can we can also uh, the recover the 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 the, the previously uh, previous well known result the the donah tanner uh, fast transition curve okay so that's that's pretty much the 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 the, the theory main the theoretical result so now uh, let me use some of the simulation to study to to verify the the analytic result we all obtained the, the before i think the simulation is a is of course it, you have to pass down the some finite size systems uh, i think here we 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 pretty much use the, the 500 or 1000 uh, i think that's that's enough to to get the the very accurate result already so basically the simulation study we study the we compare the symptomatic risk lasso risk uh, with the simulation result to see whether we can get a consistent result and also we need to verify the the fast transition curve the based on the simulation to compare it with the result based on analytic result we also study some of the dependence of the the fast transition curve on the covariance structure sigma and also on the this the, the asymmetric index positive negative asymmetric index delta epsilon so yeah we, we do uh uh, we, the, our purpose of simulation is we want to do this all these kind of studies. Okay, so so now I think here is the, for example we just compare the the, the Lasso risk, uh, the how the Lasso risk depends on the tuning parameter. The so this is the 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 solid curve is a result based on the analytic result and and this the. The error bar is the result from the simulation. Is the we we simulate 100, 100 the, 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 the independent samples, and then we take the, the mean and, and, and the standard error. So this is just represented by this dot and, and error bar here. So we see that the uh, it gets a very uh, consistent result. That fit the simulation can 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 agree with the theoretical prediction very well. So here we use a, we assume that the, the asymmetric index equals to zero, which means it's a, it's a symmetry, right? It's no, it's a, the negative and positive are, are, are symmetrical with each other. So, so that's a, we, the, 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 the dimension is a 500. It's a, we, yeah, we already get a very <coughs> accurate, re, accurate result. So here, is, I think the same thing, but for this asymmetric index equal to one, which means completely asymmetry. So, so then we see it depend on the tuning parameter. So we also get a very, very nice consistent result here. Okay, so now let's the, the, do the verification for the phase transition curve. So I think in order to get the phase transition curve numerically, I think the here we, we have to the solve the the, the 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 solve the last problem numerically because the first transition is for the noise noise situation so it's a last all is equivalent to this uh, linear the uh, linear programming problem uh, so i think that we uh, the the because we want to do in the in the two dimensional plane so we first uh, fix the grid of the the epsilon value from the the five percent to ninety-five percent, we we the select the thirty-one, even in select thirty-one points, and then for each epsilon we can get further select a, a series of delta value. The delta value is just a, we, we from the, the the concentrated around the the first transition area. It's from the first transition, subtract the zero point one to to plus zero point zero point two. Yeah, because I, I think that it's we from the five to, to ninety five because if the epsilon is very small, so it's difficult to get a numerical result. Or if 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 it is very big, if very close to one, or if if it's very close to zero, it's 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 a numeric. You have to I think the five hundred is not enough. You have to increase the dimension in order to, in order to get a very pre precise numerical result. So then for 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 this the fixed the delta and the epsilon for at each. The, the 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 delta epsilon we uh, simulate uh, the we, we get the sample generally 100 independent samples 
And then for each sample, we can uh, solve the numerically. And then we compare the numerical solution with the true solution. So if the, this, the, 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 the error is a, is a relative error is less than 10 to the power of a negative four, then we consider it's a, it's a success. Otherwise it's fail. So then I think that for each epsilon, we can fit uh, the uh, using logistic regression, fit the fit the, 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 the probability of the success. And then we choose the first, first boundary de defined as the, if the probability equals 50%. So, so that's the, the, the numerical verification for the, for, 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 for the first transition. So then I think here is the comparison between the numerical one and the an analytical one. Here the red one represents the numerical. It's a numerical, the first boundary and, 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 and the, 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 the black one is, a, uh, is for the, uh, uh, the theoretical results. You see that they're almost on top of each other. So only the, if in the, for the small epsilon area, probably they, are, they have some discrete small discrepancy that's because of the numerical i think the, as i as i said in a small epsilon area you have the i think the 500 is uh, sometimes it's not enough you, you have to increase the sample size so this is for the the, the completely symmetrical situation so i think here is a completely non-symmetrical situation you see we almost get the the very uh, similar result for the first transition verification <coughs> Okay, so so this is the 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 the, the numerical study for the first transition. So 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 then we also study the the first transition, the how the first transition depends on the different covariance structure, and also the depends on the 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 index, the asymmetric index. So I think we consider two commonly used. Covariance symmetric structures. One is the L one model. I think also is called the con compound symmetry, the covariance structure. Uh, it's a, it's a, in different terminology. So uh, I think the yeah we already discussed this. Is we assume that the correlation is dec decrease if the the two elements are far from each other. So so then we also consider another covariance structure. It's a spiked population model. Back the population model, we assume that the the entire covariance matrix basically is the is this uh, is this I, I, uh, is this the I, I, uh, IID identity matrix, and then plus some the some the the, 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 the finite number of the spike uh, the number of the spikes. So it's a I think the uh, here the the lambda is a is a eigenvalue and the v is an eigenvector. So I think uh, yeah you can build a different uh, eigenvalue and uh, eigenvector. But basically this is just uh, like the the it's uh, the entire thing is a, is a, is the main is uh, just the iid and then is a plus some the 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 the, the big spikes here. So. Uh, I think this model is actually also is commonly uh, used in, especially in some biology estimation. It's a, it's a, we all always consider this as a, as a, as a, is a, as a random noise, and then plus some real biology or real. The, it's a spike actually sometimes have some real meaning, scientific meaning, and then plus some some random noise. Okay, so that's a, called a spiked population model. So we, we study the how the first transition depends on the, on, the, on these two different special covariance matrix uh, structures. So I think here is uh, we want to, we study the fixed uh, fixed this the uh, the index uh, the symmetric index and then we study the dependence on the on the correlation. So this is for the L1 model. So, so then you see here there. I think the as long as it's symmetry, then it does not depend on the 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 it's a, the the co correlation. Is we have select four different uh, correlation coefficients, but they they are almost uh, on top of each other. So so that's uh, so actually you see here it's pretty much depends on the symmetry. If the if they are the 
the, 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 the true signal is the, the negative and the positive asymmetric from each other then it's almost the equivalent to the IID situation. Okay, so this is the, if the, it's not completely unsymmetric, so it's if the symmetric index is equal to one, so then we, we find the difference, right? You see here, the, 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 the red one represents the, 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 the positive correlation, and then the, the green one represents the negative correlation. So this black one is just IID, and this blue one is for the positive correlation with the coefficient 50%. So, so now you see here the if in the in the unsymmetric situation, so we see here the 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 the, the, the transition curve decreases the, with the correlation coefficient, right? So for the if the for the strong stronger strong positive correl correlation situation, then actually the you see the it's better, the result is better than the IID situation. Because uh, for the fixed epsilon, you need a smaller sample. Only you only need a small you only need a smaller sample in order to get the exact reconstruction compared with the IID situation. But on the other hand, if you get a negative correlation, like the green curve for the fixed epsilon, you need a more samples in order to get the exact reconstruction compared with the IID situation. So the if the correlation is strongly is strongly negative, so so I think that so so this sometimes I think that so this tells us if we know the if we have the some <clears throat> some knowledge about the co covalence structure, so then uh, we know that we we can get the make appropriate design <clears throat> a better design. So so this uh, result tells us that. Okay, so this is the, the dependence on the, on the correlation coefficient for fixed uh, delta epsilon. Then this, I think the result actually is similar but fixed the correlation coefficient but the ch change the symmetric index. So we see here the, I think this is uh, actually consistent with what we got previously. So it's uh, again, the, the, the black one represents the IID is equivalent so to the, to the no, no, not IID. The, the black one is uh, it's, it's equivalent to IID, but uh, it's uh, because of this, we still have the correlation. But, uh, but we know that the, since from the previous result, we know that the, if the, you have the, the symmetric situation does not depend on the rule. So this is equivalent to IID, the black one. The, the blue one is for the 50% the uh, uh, asymmetric and uh, the red one is for the completely Asymmetric. So you see that the, I think yeah, this is a, a consistent with the result we we get the, the previously. So uh, you know the the same thing for the for the positive correlated. You need a smaller sample in order to get the exact reconstruct precise reconstruction. Okay, so here is some study about the. For the spike the population covariance, I think that we uh, yeah we try a couple of different spike the population uh, the situation we see that the almost uh, does not have influence on the on, on the transition curve. It's all the almost uh, identical to the to the <clears throat> To the IID situation, so that's uh, seems that the spike of the population covariance structure is uh, no diff there's no difference between the between this and the, and the IID situation. It's not it's different from the compound symmetry situation. Okay, so that's uh, I think the the pretty much for the numerical. Verification of our of our an analytical result. So, uh, yeah, of course we can try some other. There are some other than this with some other covariance structure. But uh, yeah, but we, we only focus on these two uh, special uh, situations. Okay, so now I think that that's pretty much the uh, our conclusion is that the, in this this study we uh, study the asymptotic the 
distribution are limited for the Lasso estimator, especially for the non-standard Gaussian design. So I think the, most of the previous results focus on the IID Gaussian situation. Some, some results that generalize to the IID uh, is a, is a non-Gaussian, uh, but, uh, but uh, very few study the, if there's uh, some correlation. So here we also derive the formula for the asymptotic mean square error based on this asymptotic distribution. So then from here, we can get the, uh, the, uh, the phase transition characteristics for the phase transition for general covariance matrix. So I think the, the, the basic conclusion is that the, the, it's not like the IID situation. Uh, it's uh, only depends on the, only depends on the epsilon. But here, the, the phase transition boundary not only depends on epsilon, but also depends on the sign the sparsity pattern, pattern of, the, of, the, of the signal. It's a, it does not depend on the actual distribution, but uh, depends on the, the sign, the sparsity, sparsity pattern. So I think that a couple of uh, the, the future research we can do, for example, I think that in this paper, actually they study the LP regularization and uh, they found that the, for, for all the P, if in the, in the noise list situation, if for all the P, from zero, zero to one, less than one, and then uh, they have the same phase transition boundary. And also this phase transition boundary are, are much better than the Lasso. Lasso is just P equal to one here. So the, I think the, uh, it's much better means that the, the, for the fixed epsilon, they need the, the data, they need the smaller the data in order to get the, 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 the precise uh, the reconstruction. So, so this is the, in the noisy situa situation. In the, in, the, in the noisy situation, if the noise is not equal to zero, then they also, this paper also found that the, the, the difference the, between different the value of P is, is much different from each other. So for example, the, for the P equal to zero or P equal to one, it's just Lasso. Uh, this special situation is performs much better than all the other values of P if the, the the, the noise is, is very small or is, is very large. So that's the observation uh, that, uh, that discovered in this paper. So, but, but again, there is the only focus on situation is IID situation. So I think that the, the general, the naive general, generalization is uh, we can study the, what if the, what if the, the covariance matrix is not IID and uh, and uh, it's for general covariance structure. What what is the result for this LP regularization least square estimate uh, for 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 p is is not equal to one for some other values of p. So so yeah, I think that this is one of the 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 straightforward general generalization of of our result. So. I think also there are some other denoise, denoise, it's not other than the LP regularization, probably there are some other denoise, denoise functions. I think we, we can also try to, to study in the future. So, 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 so that's pretty much it. Uh, <clears throat> that's pretty much what, what I want to say today. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. <laughs>